in humble huts all across the archipelago, important work is taking place. It is the work of teachers and students coming together to preserve tradition, blending the ancient knowledge with engaging teaching methods, enlivening for a younger audience the ways of the past, or simply bringing communities together to judge what is valuable, what must be taken on the journey forward. In this season of Dayao, we visit the schools of living traditions to listen to the voices of those who have made it their mission to preserve cultures, to see in the eyes of the young a world that they will gladly inherit, preserve, and pass on. This is what it means to be Sisidlan, a bearer of culture, a school for living traditions. Mention the island of Basilan and immediately images of civil strife, insurrection, and unrest come to mind. No thanks to the many official circulars that paint the island as a place of danger. And yet, it seems a great disservice to the Yakans, the indigenous people of Basilan. The Gawad sa Malilikha ng Bayan has honored two Yakan traditional artists for their efforts to preserve and promote the musical and weaving traditions of their people. Who are these Yakan exemplars and how have they served as vessels of Dayao? More importantly, how are their art forms ways to peace and cultural preservation? Complexity and sophistication. Many scholars have marveled at how Yakan visual arts and music, especially, require great concentration and skill. In the field of music, Huang Ahadas is a virtuoso whose mastery of Yakan rhythms and instruments has stimulated a renewed interest and study in this most dynamic form of Yakan intangible heritage. Kaya niya naisip na gumawa ng gabang dahil noong una, wala pa silang agong. Kaya sabi ng tatay niya, uh, mauna muna siyang mag matuto sa gabang. Dahil marunong na siyang gumawa ng gabang, gumawa na siya ng kwintangan kayo, yung uday kulintangan. Hiri Hiri is a master of all the instruments of the of the Basil of the Yakan of Basilan, and um, I know very few people in this country who has mastered all the instruments of his community of his of his ethnic or cultural community. He knows uh, almost all the important uh, repertoire pieces no? for the Kulintang. The, the Kulintang of the Maguindanao or the Maranao has eight gongs. The Kulintang of the Maguindanao or the Maranao uh, tends to be more melodic in the way uh, it is played simply because there are more notes. However, among the Yakan, the Kulintang usually has, has only five notes. How, how you cannot play so many melodies with only five notes. That's why their concept of music is highly rhythmic. And to the use of uh, what is called interlocking rhythms, interlocking rhythms are uh, you, you play simultaneously different rhythms at the same time, uh, you are able to create melodies. It's able to play nuclear melodies using interlocking rhythms. And um, the, I think the, the most, uh, well, rapid way of playing the Kulintang is found among the Yakan. Wang Ahadas uses the, tech, the same technique 
in playing the gabang. Gabang is a bamboo xylophone made with, with five bamboo blades. No? The gabang is a very beautiful watery sound. You seem to be hearing drops, drops of water when you listen to the gabang. There's another instrument called the quintangan kayu. There, there are five lugs, uh, long lugs uh, of different lengths. And again, there are five instruments. You play this in any way similar to the gabang or similar to the quintang. You know, the sounds of the quintangan kayu um, really reminds you of the sounds of uh, forests, of the, uh, of the rivers, and really very soothing to the ear. Daya has been fortunate enough to document the work of Uwang Ahadas many times. His visual impairment has never been an obstacle to his continual creation. Instead, this blind virtuoso seems to always lead his audience deeper into the labyrinth of rhythms, patterns, beats, repeated and improvised on. Because he's blind, he's able to teach by holding the hand of the student and guide the students until the student learns how to, how to play the instrument, whether on the quintang and kayu, the gabang, or the kulintang, and of course, there are other Yakan instruments that he, he is able to, to play. And uh, he has dedicated more than 30 years of his life to teaching how to play this Yakan musical instrument, not only in his, in his uh, village, but all, all, all other, in many other Yakan villages in Basilan. Masaya na siyang tumugtog, mag-isa, learn from his father. Tapos, uh, naghanap na siya ng mga magiging kasama niya sa pagtugtog, yung mga barkada niya sa pagtugtog. Kaya, naging masaya siya sa pagtugtog. Padyak-adyak, naus, magpasudanan, pero dugok mga kanakin din siya ako ngaya. Ano ba siya na po may sakahin? Marunong tumugtog yung lahat ng anak niya, pero si Sanira, sabi niya dahil matanda siya, uh, panganay na anak, mas lalong marunong si Sanira kaysa sa yung mga younger ones. Marunong siya lahat. Kung maganda ang music niya, gusto niya, lahat ng, dito sa, lahat ng tao sa Pilipinas, uh, kopyahin yung music niya. Sina siya. Is there a link between the musical complexity and the other art forms of the Yakan? In this courtship dance, recreated by the late national artist for dance Ramon Obusan, we see how the bodies of dancers respond instantly to the patterns of the music in ways which are courtly, elegant, and dynamic.
the same density of patterns. The same repetition of motifs on a more minute and tangible scale applies to the traditional dress of the Yakan. Renowned for their dense and colorful weaves and for the vast repertoire of visual motifs and weaving techniques, the Yakan make for the most striking and fastidious dressers. Men and women share the same articles of dress. The trousers or sawal, embellished with slim stripes. Each stripe is a succession of minute designs, repeating. The baju yakan for men and the pagal bato for women is a button-up shirt in silk or hand-woven fabric. This often embellished with brass or silver buttons or batawi, adding both texture and color are the layers of fabric, shoulder cloths, head wraps, overskirts, girdles, each one in a different pattern. Kasi isa lang ang, ang saputangan po may isang mata, tapos may limang mata, tapos may walo po, tapos hanggang 24 po, meron po. Yung, yung ibig sabihin po ng mata, yung diamond. Kasi may isang diamond lang, tapos may lima, Hanggang 8, hanggang 20, hanggang 18, depende po sa design po, depende po sa anong gusto mo. Ah, kakaiba po ang design ng sinaluan kasi may parang bamboo design po, tapos meron din po parang crab design, tapos meron po yung diamond na design. At saka meron po ano, yung parang ahas-ahas design, ang pinantupan para sa skirt po. Dia kan follows a different tradition because the the, the, the handmade handmade uh, tapestry or table runners are also use some kind of embroidery pattern and that uh, mixing it with the, the use of the weaving loom and this is very difficult you, you, they produce hundreds and hundreds of designs not only for for tapestry or table runners, but also for headdresses, also for skirts. And if I paraphrase from, from uh, Dr. De Baradas, who was a culture, uh, cultural historian, he says that among the most complex of weaving traditions are found among the Yakan as well as the Bilaan for their excellence in their in the weaving. It is in the work of another Yakan Gamaba awardee that all these patterns come together, separate pieces, all adding to a unified and magnificent whole. So far, you've sampled the intricacies of Yakan art through their dance, the music, and through the virtuosity of Gamaba winner, Uwang Ahadas. In 2018, another traditional artist from the Yakan was accorded the distinction of Gawad sa Malilikha ng Bayan. A weaver, Ambalang Ausalin of Paranbasak Lamitan, carries in her loom and in her hands a whole tradition of intricate and technologically precise patterns, all just as complex as the music you've heard.
while other Gamaba recipients in the field of weaving have been cited for their mastery of the abaca ika technique. Ambalang Ausalin was recognized for her mastery of the tenun, or tapestry technique. It is a difficult technique where raised patterns are produced on a cotton ground, producing a textile that is both visually arresting as well as highly textured. The tenon technique is most showcased in the seputangan, the square textile used as a head wrap, a shoulder cloth, or a waist wrap by both Yakan men and women. The seputangan features a central square with diamond motifs, each one containing, within its corners, varying cruciform patterns. Two other hallmarks of the Yakan weaving tradition are the suwa bekat or cross-stitch embellishment and suwa pendan, an embroidered embellishment. Both are found in the wraps and overskirts of Yakan clothing, especially in the Sinaluan textile, for which the Yakan weavers are most famous. These textiles and their techniques are specialties of this 75-year-old weaver. Ambalang Ausalin was born to a family of weavers, famous throughout Basilan for their fine work. She learned the art of weaving from her mother, who trained her daughter when she was still a girl of 10, inculcating in the young Ausalin a consciousness of her clan's renown. Curiously, Ausalin remembers she was first taught to weave using strips of coconut and banana leaves. Good cotton threads have always been a scarcity among the Yakan, and young weavers could not afford to waste precious raw materials while still learning. The young Ausalin was a fast learner. She remembers how at 12, she was able to accomplish the weaving of a textile through the difficult Bunga Sama process, in which a single design element requires thread to be passed 70 times through the loom. A mother of three, she is proud of the fact that the legacy she inherited from her forebears has been passed on to her three children, Bertie, Vilma, and Damli. Among the Yakan, it is not unusual for men to take to the trade of weaving. Sa pamamagitan nito, ikinala sa listahan ng manlilikha ng bayan ang pangalang Ambalang Ausalit, Yakan Penang. The Gamaba Honor has only stoked her passion to continue teaching the intricacies of Yakan weaving to more of our community members. Most people thought that uh, giving the award to the Yakan is not a priority because we find so many weavers still alive. But when we counted the number of weavers, they are, what, 
um, less and less now than before. So again, there's a danger that if we don't really support this with an award, the young, younger people might think that it's not important. So we really have to support it from the center. Any support from Manila really encourages the people, it really empowers them so that uh, uh, Ambalang or Salin will really be inspired to continue this and teach that the, really the duty of the Manila Kanabayan to make sure that uh, she or he transfers this skill to the younger people in, in the community. She bemoans the fact that little has changed since she was a girl. Good cotton threads are still in short supply in Basilan, and there are many more students to be taught, many more intricate traditions that must be preserved against the onslaught of war and unrest. In the season of Daya, we have traveled to areas in Mindanao that are far off the beaten track. Areas where the Lumad culture thrives in spite of militarization, social and civic unrest, and exploitation. If we must value the arts of this indigenous people, must we not also feel a deep-rooted concern for the issues that threaten their very existence? Yet, as we have seen in the episodes featuring the most recent Gamaba winners, creation, skill, and tradition are passed on despite the often life-threatening odds. In these textiles, we find ways in which the indigenous preserve peace and identity. But for how long? What else must be done to ensure the continuity of life and the continual creation of Dayao? Our knowledge, our pride.